White Mississippians believed that what was going to happen in the summer of 64 was something that not only they had to be psychologically prepared for, they had to be militarily prepared for it as well. It shows you the hysteria that was evident in much of white Mississippi. In Jackson, Mississippi, a city of 100,000 whites, 50,000 Negroes, the mayor has prepared for this summer's activity by increasing the police forces, by passing new ordinances against demonstrations, and by purchasing a steel-plated vehicle, a riot control car known locally as Thompson's Tank, named for Mayor Alan Thompson. We are prepared uh, to take care of any law violations, to keep down violence. In addition to Thompson's tank, armor-plated and equipped with nine machine gun positions, the arsenal includes cage trucks for transporting masses of arrested violators, searchlight trucks, each of which can light three city blocks in case of night riots. The Citizens Council had convinced people that uh, the Klan wasn't necessary, that it was bad publicity, and that they could keep schools from being desegregated, they could keep lunch counters from being integrated. But by 1964, when they see the volunteers for Freedom Summer, it was clear that they couldn't. And that's when the Klan starts to ride. The Klan rose up as one in Mississippi. One night in April of 1964, crosses were burned all over Mississippi. They claimed that they had 90,000 members and they were gonna resist what the Klan called the nigger communist invasion of Mississippi. So Mississippi on the eve of Freedom Summer was on a hair trigger.